Hello, hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Marcio Marinho here. In this video, we're going to wrap up our application and cover uh, that application with JUnit tests. So today, uh, I'll be doing a few refactorings uh, just to show a little bit of, of the process of refactoring and adding tests and moving code around uh, and on and on. So we can have in the end a clean view of our application and make sure that uh, it behaves as by the specification. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen soon so you can just review everything. Um, one little note is if you have not watched the previous two videos, please take a look at the description below because they have been linked there. Uh, so this way you can watch uh, in the proper sequence and don't feel and don't have that lost feeling here because we are far ahead from the beginning point. Okay, so without further ado, let me share my screen. Here we go. This is my screen. Um, this is pretty, uh, pretty much the point where we stopped the last time. So we have the shopping cart, uh, which is this class, which has many items, and each item is linked to a product. We are also copying the original price, so we may not lose it in case uh, we uh, change that product price from the uh, product's inventory, okay? So let's continue on, on our test. So we have this code here. Uh, let me, yeah, I think it's more space. Uh, so we have created our shopping cart. We created three items that they will be built on the products. And we have also these methods here that we sh uh, still have to implement, okay? So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is to uh, do a little bit of cleanup in here and change a little bit uh, because we don't have to pass the price. This is one thing because we'll be copying uh, that price from the product as uh, I just did here. But in this case, we are simply uh, pointing to that reference we're going to have a new big decimal and we're gonna get that string value and clone that value. This way we will not uh, lose that value after the user adds to the, um, to the shopping cart. Next thing is uh, now we, we have to take care of um, the constructor here because we're expecting a product. So according to our requirements, let me get it here. We will have only three products. Let me copy them. And I can go back to this test. Let me just leave them here for the time being, just to uh, make sure I have them here. So let me create a new product. Uh, that's gonna be bottle of water, new product. Uh, yeah, the constructor is expecting a name and a price. So let's do that. The name is uh, the description here. And the price is gonna be a new big decimal of the original price. Oops. Yeah. The next two products, they're gonna be uh, built the same way. Toothpaste and shampoo. Also, let me copy the prices or our test is not gonna work or it's gonna fail for the wrong reason. So, toothpaste and the last item is a shampoo. Okay, now I can delete these things here and I can simply now pass um, the products to the shopping cart item. So we're gonna create those items based on the product. So toothpaste and shampoo. So it's pretty good. We can, uh, we have uh, that object construction now, which is based on the product. Next thing is to add a unit test for this class, um, just to make sure 
uh, it works. Uh, yeah, so let's create a test here, which is gonna be should create an item based on product. So what we're gonna do here is uh, something similar. So I'm just gonna copy uh, uh, this code from here, and I'm gonna use only one, uh, only one item and one product. So what I want here is to make sure that uh, once I pass the product to the item, uh, I'm gonna do the, the right thing uh, to that product and create the item based on that product. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm here, just create the product, bottle of water. Now I have one item here and then uh, I can assert equals that item one get product got get name is equals to bottle of water. Oops, so I have okay, I got the whole string here. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna comment. Uh, this whole thing here so we can compile and run my test now so so far so good because uh, I'm, I'm simply ref uh, referencing that product itself that's why I say get item get product name um, and next time next thing is um, to assert equals uh, item one dot um, get price because if you guys remember we are copying the price um, and then this must be equals to uh, that value which is the original value so you can run it again yeah and it works um, just for a better example, we can create another scenario. Um, just to really make sure that uh, we are covered. So should create an item based on product uh, and check for um, mutability, okay? Uh, in this case, what I'm gonna do is um, the product here uh, will be able to mutate it uh, so we know that uh, it's working because everything is fine here so we we got our back covered here we could go even further but I'm just gonna stop <laughs> right here uh, just not to get too uh, too much complex. Okay, now you can get get back here, and we're going to uncomment this code, and we can create the add item method. The add item method is simply uh, it's gonna simply receive a shopping cart item, and it's gonna add um, to the list. Okay, uh, we can run. Um, just test now and it's gonna fail because we forgot to initialize that uh, collection oh actually that's items.add that's not the right error <laughs> this is the right error so that's an no pointer exception because it did not initialize that um, collection which we'll be doing uh, in the constructor here so ID and this items equals to new array list um, yeah ne let me get the atomic long and this one is gonna receive next ID increment and get so 
I think we are pretty good here. Um, as uh, I have implemented this uh, code before, so previously when uh, in the first or second video, uh, where I have this code in here, so I can simply run this test here. And now everything should be fine. So it's all hunky-dory, it's, uh, it's passing, uh, and it is all good. So we can verify that once the user calls um, get total amount, we'll be able to calculate and give them the proper value back. Um, I would like to do a, a, a few things here. So that's all part of the, the test. Um, the, the first thing is uh, this application test, um, this test should not be here. So it's more a kind of shopping cart. I was just using this test class because that was what uh, Maven gave me for free. But I feel uh, it should be better uh, just to move uh, into a shopping cart test. Let me just uh, get this whole method and add it in here. I think that, that the, the semantic is better because we are simply testing the shopping carts and not the whole application itself. It's pretty cool, it still works. Um, in here, we could add another test here, which would be more a kind of component test. We would be testing everything all together. I'm gonna stop uh, right here because uh, we could keep going uh, and developing even more features, keeping keeping refactoring and add more stuff. But um, the big point is, uh, I don't think we, we we need more than we already have. So we we have covered uh, our uh, application with tests. Of course, we could have added more tests, added more scenarios, but anything else will, will pretty much follow the same pattern I, I presented here. So if you guys want, you can just go uh, and extend the example and test a few more things. Okay, let me get back to me. Yeah, so in this uh, quick three videos, we, we took a look on how to set up uh, an, a project, a Java project using Maven, and then add JUnit 5 support for that. After that, we also extended that project and created this new application and also covered uh, the application with tests. Um, there is a lot of stuff that we, we could still do, uh, but I'll probably save this uh, for the following videos. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please hit the like and subscribe button so you help me with the YouTube algorithm and you also won't miss any new video from, from me. Okay, guys? So stay safe. See you guys soon.